Hello everyone, we're just waiting one minute to get started whilst people continue to join. But welcome to everyone who's joined already. Lovely to see you here. Okay, well, the attendees appear to have slowed, so I will get started with some housekeeping as people continue to join. Um, so hello, everyone, and welcome. If you have any questions for our panellists, either throughout the presentation or during the discussion part of this open forum, please post them in the Q&A box found by clicking the black navigation panel at the bottom of your screen. If you see a question there that interests you, you can click the thumbs up to let us know. Um, you can, of course, use the chat to write your questions. Um, and during the discussion, we may unmute you so that you can add more details to your question. Um, so that's if you would prefer to speak out loud, raise your hand and um, request to speak, and we'll give you the permission because we'd like this to be a, a two-way conversation. So please remember that all questions are welcome. Um, they don't need to be specific to anything we've mentioned already. Um, it's not a structured conversation, so all, all, all the conversation is welcome here. Okay, so without much further ado, I would like to introduce our hosts of this open forum. First up, we have Guillermo Chantada, who is head of, of the outreach program at the Pediatric Cancer Centre in Barcelona at Hospital San Jean de, de Du, um, scientific director of haematology oncology service at Fundacion Perez Secrimi in Montevideo, um, Uruguay, and principal researcher for the National Council for Research and Technology in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and of course, let's not forget, president of SIOP. And um, we also have Regine Kabudi, who's Professor of Pediatrics and Pediatric Hematology Oncology at the Istanbul University um, in Carapasa Medical Facility and the Oncology Institute and Secretary General of SIOP. So that they are some very long introductions there, um, but for two very important people at SIOP. So I will welcome them to the floor and allow them to talk a little bit about the structure and background of SIOP just to kick off our conversation today. And I'll be looking out for any of your questions from the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nancy. Uh, welcome, dear friends. It's a huge pleasure for us to, to have you here today. Uh, we started doing this uh, last year, uh, this series of um, meetings where we uh, spend an hour just um, letting you know what SIOP is doing uh, besides the, the Congress, is more especially hearing from you. This is a time when we are uh, we really look forward to your questions, to your comments, to your suggestions. So, so please participate, raise your hand, ask as many questions as you want. As you want. This will be really uh, very important for us uh, at SAI. And now let me hand over to uh, Regine Kebudi, our Secretary General. Hello. Welcome, everyone. It's a great honor and pleasure to be here with my president, Guillermo Chantada, and you, our dear SIOP members, SIOP leaders uh, that help all the children with cancer in the world. So uh, as Dr. Guillermo Chantada has said, this open forums have begun last year, and it is uh, we are doing these so that we can get more member engagement, your questions, how to improve, how to make more uh, to the benefit of SIOP and to, to the benefit of our members. We have, uh, we will briefly uh, show about the structure in SIOP and uh, about the networks and the working groups and how members can be engaged. And we will be really happy to have your questions and your comments. Uh, that's why we're doing the open forum. So we have a board and the board members, which is uh, the leader is the Dr. Guillermo Chantada, who is the president of SIOP, and he's from Argentina, also from Barcelona. I'm the general secretary uh, and I'm from Turkey. 
Alan Davidson is a treasurer and he is from South Af Africa. And Asim Belgoma is the scientific committee chair and he's from Pakistan. And you can see there's a huge diversity in also regions and gender and all, uh, which, is, which is what we want, multidisciplinary, a diverse uh, global society. We have the, uh, some network, some of these networks are represented in the board, like the Global Health Network. The co-chairs are Mohamed Sagir Khan, who is at the moment uh, working in Saudi Arabia, and Frederico Antillon from Guatemala. The nursing network is a very important not network. And as we said, it's, it's the SIOP is a multidisciplinary family of physicians, nurses, psychiatrists, psychologists, rehab uh, specialists, uh, all healthcare professionals that work with children with cancer, also patients, patient advocates, and survivors. This makes us really unique uh, globally. Courtney Sullivan is heading the nursing network. Coredia Kindela is the chair of the Young SIOP Network, and I'm happy to say that we have 3,000 members of SIOP, and about 1,000 members are either less than 40 years of age and uh, in the Young SIOP Network, or members that are also uh, interested in the Young SIOP Network. And Coredia will be with us, and I'm sure he's in the participants and will like to hear his uh, comments at the end as well. Rashmi Dalvi from India is our dear uh, leader in the advocacy chair, and she was also the president of SIOP Asia previously. We have six continental branches of SIOP with six presidents in each continental branch, which makes us, as I say, more diverse, unique, global. Carmela Rizari is in Europe, Andreo Capileno in Latin America, Hiroki Hori in Asia, Claire Wakefield in Oce Oceania, Jeff Dome in North America, and Joyce Kambuku in Africa. And so these continental branches also have continental meetings, uh, like the SIOP meeting we have for all members, they have the continental uh, SIOP congresses. And also Wade Kiono, who is the local chair of the Honolulu Congress in 2024 in October, is also a board member and he is waiting for our all for us all to be in Honolulu for the Congress. And of course, we cannot do it uh, without our SIOP uh, secretariat, which does a lot a huge work. Susan Vollard, I'm sure you all know her. Uh, she's always with us in all the Congresses and whenever you have a question, she is there. She is the chief executive officer and she has been with us with, for more than 10 years. Tessie Love is the executive director for programs and strategy. Anelia Atanasova is the administrative coordinator and she is with us today. Nancy Anderson is the marketing and communications manager. And thank you, Nancy and Anelia, to be with us today. Olga Koseva is the director of the policy affairs. We have some committees, and uh, you can see the names of the chairs as well. The Advocacy Committee, Education and Training Committee, the Finance Committee, the Governance Committee, Membership Committee, the Publication Endorsement Committee, the Scientific Committee, and also the WHO World Health Organization Non-State Actor Engagement Committee. As SIOP, we are a non-state actor in official relations with the WHO, which we will be talking about the GICC Global Initiative for Childhood Cancer after a while. And also we have a very important research committee, the PARC committee, which is chaired by our president, Guillermo Luis Chantada, and he will be telling about it and how you can be uh, involved in, in the PARC. And we have the SIOP networks, and we want all our members to be members of networks, working groups, and to be quite active in those networks. And now we require all our network and working groups to have three, at least three non-Congress activities within the year with the members to have more member engagement and to hear your voice more. Within the SIOP networks, we have the Global Health Network, Nutrition Network, Supportive Care Network, Pediatric Psycho-Oncology Network, the Nursing Network, the Young SIOP Network, which I said is really has about a, th a thousand members involved, and the Women Leaders in Pediatric Oncology Network, which is also 
uh, leading very effectively. And there is a new network coming very soon. It is the Epidemiology and Outcomes Network because epidemiology and outcomes is really very important in childhood cancer. In the Global Health Network, we have working groups and also in some other network, we have some working groups like the palliative care, adolescent and young adults, psychosocial well-being, traditional complementary medicine, partnership, the PROS LMIC, the, the young LMIC, which is now called the Innovation and Research uh, Working Group. And we want uh, all of you to take part in these working groups, networks, and be, to be part active members uh, and to hear your voice within these networks and working groups also. As you know, SIOP has a very important five goals, the advocacy, research, education, member engagement, and also partnerships. And within the partnerships, we are partnering with uh, the CCI, which is the Childhood Cancer International, which is chaired by Rodney. And there is a fantastic team working uh, for the World Cancer Day, Childhood uh, CC, uh, the World Childhood Cancer Day, and also all year long with many activities. With the, we are collaborating with the Pediatric Radiation Oncology Society, with the International Pediatric Surgery, Surgical Oncology Society, as you know. And also we are a non-state actor of the in official relations with the WHO and also giving a lot of uh, importance to the GICC, the Global Initiative for Childhood Cancer, which I'm sure many of you know. This aims, this was launched in 2018 by the WHO uh, and SIOP is a partner. And also uh, we aim to increase the survival rate of at least six very common cancers that have a huge uh, uh, cure rate in high income countries to increase that to at least 60% by 2030 in low and middle income countries. And these are ALL, Burkitt lymphoma, Hodgkin lymphoma, retinoblastoma, low grade glioma, among others. And we have the global mapping and the ARIA project, which are very important, and the PARC project. And now I would like to give the word to our president, Guillermo Chantada, to tell more about the global mapping project, which is really a fantastic project uh, that will help all children in the world, and the ARIA and the PARC project. Dr. Chantada, would you like to take the word? Yes, thank you, Regine. Um, any questions from the audience? I, I, I don't see any at the chat, but feel free to raise your hand, interact, and, and, and interrupt us, uh, and we would love to um, to ask uh, to, to answer in any of your questions. Yes, as Regine mentioned, uh, the Global Mapping Project is a very ambitious project that was uh, launched in 2018, and as the name says, it, it, it aims to map all the uh, pediatric oncology facilities around the world, around the world. So that is really a huge challenge. It's not just sending an email to our members and saying, well, tell us where you are, with how many persons work in your, in your center, how many beds you have, et cetera. It's just going over systematically, approaching the hospitals, the members, the national societies, everyone involved in childhood cancer care to have a complete mapping on what the situation is in each of the continents. So far, uh, we completed Africa. We launched Latin America last, last uh, week, and uh, it's uh, about to be complete. And now you can access the map directly from our website. So you just uh, have it available. So you, for any research project that you may have, please reach out to us. And maybe this mapping is useful. For example, there was a group that wanted to know about the usage of um, catheters, of uh, intravenous catheters around the world. So they came to us and we have already all the connections. We know where the person, where, where the hospitals are, where, you have to make this, these connections. You, then another group wanted to know where situation about bone marrow transplantation, how many centers are doing, how many beds they have, how many transplants they are doing in lower middle income countries. Again, the global mapping can be very useful in, in, in these activities. So have, please have that in mind. If you ever think of a project that might be feasible and the global mapping 
can be supportive of you for that, just let us know and reach out to us. Uh, we this is the reason why we did the mapping is for this is to advise uh, people to advise also policymakers. For example, when the PAHO needs uh, the data upon power transplantation, they can use the global mapping, etc. Of course, ARIA is a huge uh, project that we run um, together with St. Jude Global and PROS and uh, IPSO, where it's an evolution of uh, the previous uh, SIOP work on the generating the adaptive uh, treatment guidelines. And uh, so it's really very ambitious. It's um, uh, there are disease specific groups that are discussing what is the best evidence that could be applicable to different settings around the world. And when it is not, we have to create it. And that is what we are going to do with the park, with what we are doing with the park project. The park program is, um, is not um, that SIOP is doing research itself. It's SIOP supporting the research that is being done by um, cooperative groups that are working in low and middle income countries. So thanks to the support uh, from donations, uh, SIOP is now supporting these cooperative groups, which in Latin America is Gallup, in the Eastern Mediterranean region is POEM, in Sub-Saharan Africa is uh, Kanker Africa, and in India is INFO. And we are supporting uh, not exactly a protocol. We are supporting the research capacity. We are supporting these groups to make it feasible to do research, to be able to generate the evidence that we don't have, that we need for them. They are the only ones that can generate this evidence. And also thanks for the very generous donation from Nai Kong Chung. You know, he was the the creator, the he he had the idea of anti-GD2 antibodies, you know how, how, how important he is. So he and his family and his wife donated a fund for supporting career development awards. And we had um we offered that to the cooperative groups related to park to nominate people. We have 13 great nominate uh, nominated people, and two of them have been um awarded to receive this um, support so they can um, advance their career, have a career development. And so Dr. Uh, Sinivasan from India, from INFOG, and Gabriela Villanueva from Argentina, um, Sinivasan from INFOG, Gabriela Villanueva from Gallup, they have received the, they have just received the award a couple of weeks ago. So just uh, in a nutshell, this is what SIOP is, uh, some of the things that SIOP is doing, it's not just the Congress. And um, so, Regine, would you like to? Yeah, thank to you so much, Guillermo, uh, for giving you know? information about the PARC program, which is very important. And we shall tell our members to keep up wa watching the SIOP uh, weekly bulletin for the, uh, we announce all these scholarships and awards in the, every week when they are available. And it is a huge, huge uh, opportunity for especially people in uh, low and middle income countries. Well, but we have other types scholarships and awards uh, like the Young Investigator Award, the Rising Star Award, the Global Health Scholarships, the Nursing Scholarships. And when you're uh, submitting an abstract, the, uh, you have to uh, also, the deadline is like in the abstracts, like April, the beginning of April. So what? be uh, careful and don't miss to apply for a scholarship if you're looking for a scholarship. And they gave support for the Congress travel and accommodation and uh, free membership and free registration. And we have other uh, scholarships like the Schweizgut Prize. You know, SIOP was founded in 1969 and Dr. Schweizgut was one of the founders, a very uh, important uh, women uh, oncologists uh, that really we have a prize for her name. Hans Peter Wagner Prize and Hans Peter Wagner has done a lot for the PODC pediatric oncology in developing countries, which is today the Global Health Network. And there is a prize on his name. The Lifetime Achievement Award is given in recognitions of someone's scientific achievement and contribution to science, mission and vision. These are for senior members, in fact. 
And there's the Nursing Leadership Award. That's also for a senior nursing person. We and the, we have had uh, in the past the communication was usually done by through the Cure for Kids, which was kind of provided by Saint Jude at that time. But now we have the Syop Connect, which and we can do all the connections through Syop Connect. Uh, and uh, please go to Syop Connect, and you can activate the groups because if you want to be uh, a group a member of a group, of a working group, of a network, you have to activate that work, uh, that group so that you can get all the information, all the announcements, all the um, uh, communication accord in that network and in also in that uh, working group. And so uh, please uh, visit Type Connect and use it as a communications tool. And, uh, you know, the membership status in SIOP begins January every year and ends at the 31st of December. So even if you have uh, been a member in October, it ends at the end of December most of the time. So please renew your membership if you have not done so. And you can do it through SIOP Connect. And there has been some... Uh, payment issues, some problems that it has been solved. And if a membership certificate is needed, you can download from the SIOP Connect that one also. And there are, uh, at the moment, uh, a lot of payment for payment uh, options, credit card, Visa, MasterCard, and Amex. And also uh, you can do it with a bank transfer. And if there is any problem, please email the SIOP Secretariat and they will be uh, helping you uh, if you could not do it, if there's any problem that uh, can arise. And also we would like to ask you to renew your memberships and be a member not only for the Congress, but all year long, because there is a lot of benefits of membership. For the Congress, you know, it is a reduced registration free, but other than that, it, when you're a member, you have free subscription to the Pediatric Blood and Cancer. And if you're a nurse or to the European Journal of Oncology Nursing, you have free access to regular e-newsletters, online forums, events, learning opportunities. You receive the Sosido Digest every Wednesday. The Sosido Digest has the abstracts, a list of all the new the publications of SIOP members, and when you can uh, just click and see all the abstracts, uh, which is a really good tool. You can, if you uh, have a, a 30 minutes, you can read so many new advancement uh, publications each week. SIOP Weekly Bulletin every Thursday uh, announces all the news, all the scholarship opportunities, all the educational opportunities. You have free access to the Knowledge Center. You, the eligibility for SIOP scholarships and awards if you're a member, free access to all SIOP programs at activities like the networks, working groups, free access to network SIOP Connect and professional development opportunities, and eligibility to run for office and to vote for SIOP leadership positions. We want all members to be engaged in working groups, networks. We want to hear your voice. And we want you, after getting involved in these networks, uh, working groups, to be also in leading positions, uh, which will help improve the society and also in your centers uh, the, to the benefit of childhood cancer globally. Everyone has, has a SIOP story. Their first, uh, when they first have joined SIOP, and uh, there is a lot of stories. And here, I would like to ask, our President Shantada, what was your SIOP story? Which was your first SIOP Congress that you attended? And what was your story? How did you get engaged with SIOP? Well, my, my first SIOP Congress was in 1995 in, uh, in Uruguay, Montevideo. I was a third year fellow, in fact, at that time. And uh, I presented, uh, I submitted a paper on retinoblastoma and it was accepted for oral presentation. And I was very nervous, of course. And uh, when I presented, there was just one question. And that, I think I answered correctly. I I, I came back uh, from the stage saying, well, I, I, I made a great answer. And then I realized that the question was asked by Anna Meadows. Oh. Which, uh, <laughs> <laughs> fortunately. Would you fortunately, like to tell who Anna Meadows know, is? Some, some of our young members may not know. Yeah, I, I, I did not know, I know her, but I didn't know that she was the one that asked the question. 
uh, so I, I didn't know her face. Those these were days before internet. I read her papers. I know who she was. He, she didn't introduce herself because she knew everybody knew they knew, uh, knew her. And if I knew who who she was, I would be very nervous. But I think uh, that. <laughs> But fortunately, I didn't know who she was, and I, and and I think I I replied her her question um, properly. So that's my my first uh, my first sign in 1995. Let me tell you about mine also. And also, I joined my first SIOP Congress was in 1991. It was in Rhodes, in Greece, in Rhodes, Greece. I was uh, the first year, I the second year fellow. And we had uh, poster presentations also. And when I went there, I was really amazed to see so many people coming from all over the world. And I I always looked uh, to the names, the, to the name tags. And the, those names were great names that we all read the liter from the literature. We read the, 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 their oncology paper and that there it was the Jonathan Finley. There it was uh, Zeltzer. There it was uh, the lymphoma uh, experts. It was really amazing. I fell in love with SIOP when I went to SIOP in 1991 and I said, I have to be a member all the time and I have to come to all congresses. And as Guillermo knows, I have been to all annual congresses and I hope I will help. I'll be healthy and until uh, I'm quite old, I can go to all SIOP congresses. It is a huge opportunity for science, a huge opportunity for networking. I have known so many people, both high income countries, low middle income countries. And uh, I would like to tell our young SIOP members, please do not be shy. Go and introduce yourself, ask who they are, uh, try to make a connection. And if you have answer, questions for uh, our experts, I always so humble and they have always uh, really helped us a lot with our questions for uh, that we had for our patients. Uh, like we got their, their emails or during there, but always be prepared to ask the question. First, be prepared, uh, read the literature. What are the options and what do the experts tell you according to your patient? This is really a huge opportunity. So we will be asking, we do have time. And now I asked Anelia to have you all uh, so that we can see your faces and we can you can be more engaged with us. And uh, so... Yeah, this was the swipe story. I think uh, just, uh, no, just, sorry, sorry to interrupt you before we move on. I think your story and my story have one common denominator, which is SIOP is the place where you can find the people that are writing the books or writing the papers. And not only you can see them, because sometimes you go to a huge congress like ASCO or to ESMO or to ASH, where you see that person like a, a, a kilometer away and he's running. And SIOP is usually a friendly place and then have time to discuss. They usually stop by, ask questions, you, you and you can sometimes get uh, really a close relationship with the with the people that are very involved in pediatric oncology. So I, I, I take that. Uh, I think probably I saw also um, a comment in the chat that um, had the, the same uh, impression. I think it was Maya. That uh, that said that it was uh, that he had a, the, the same uh, impression for for Sayop. I think that yeah, is something that yeah. Sayop has. Yeah, Maya, would you like to tell your experience? Now you, we are all connected together. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Rajan, and thank you, Gear. It, it was wonderful so far, and thank you for all these updates. And um, uh, absolutely, I mean, just as you were saying it, I completely agree that, you know, uh, and exactly as Guillermo said, I think SIOP is a pediatric conference at heart. So, I mean, you know, there's a lot of closeness and warmth that's not, that's missing with all the other major conferences. And um, that that is one of the things that makes it so special. And you actually get to name uh, get to meet and talk with the real great names who've written all the great papers that's a great great experience thank and you Mira, thank you maya thank you so much mira would you like to tell your first experience Sayop? so it was when was your first experience and what did you feel um hello everyone um, the uh, Sayop in barcelona in 2020 um two was my 
was my first SIOP and it was my really opportunity that I have joined that SIOP with uh, Professor Kebudi. But even um, if I came there alone, I think the SIOP is very friendly because um, I see that everyone um, is connecting all together and you can ask everything um, if you want to everybody and and you can make connections really networking and you can make really new friends that and um, then uh, after my first I have, I'd like to uh, go to all uh, all the conference congress of SIOP and that, that's that's amazing thank you thank you thank you you were in Akova. we hope you will be in honolulu if we can find the funding rajul would you like to tell your experience your expectations and at the end i will give the word to, we will give the word to Corede, our young side of chair he is with us and it's so good that to have that patient advocates also yeah raul yes hi hi everyone uh, my first IOP was back in 2022 in Barcelona, and it was such a great experience. Uh, the first of all, like to meet everyone from all over the world, it was just amazing. And uh, second was I uh, actually had to present a, po a paper. Uh, uh, I had to present a poster, and uh, that experience to present your poster to present your work on an international, uh, such a huge conference. It was uh, really heartwarming for me. And uh, thanks to Dr. Maya, who really guided me at every step and uh, who is the reason why I am here in SIOP as a member. And there is so much still to learn. And uh, when I look at all of you, like the great leaders, and I, I feel so inspired to learn each, uh, you know, each and every, at each and every step ahead. So thank you all of you so much for being so inspiring and uh, for always guiding us. Thank you so much for being with us. We are so happy that you are feeling so enthusiastic in joining SIOP. Korede, as the SIOP young, young SIOP chair, we would like to hear you. And I also saw Ellen, he was with us. Uh, he, if he can connect, we will like to hear him as well. Yeah. Yes, Korede. All right. Uh, thank you so much, um, Regin. Um, good morning. Good afternoon, um, everyone. <laughs> All over the world. Um, I uh, like like every, let me just start from where everyone has started from. I think um, SIOP, like I say, it's a place for all. I mean, everyone that has a heart for pediatric oncology, everyone that has a heart to see an outcome, a positive outcome in childhood cancer globally. I think um, regardless of your background, you find a place in SIOP. For example, I am a patient advocate and... Um, I find a place in SIOP and um, I, I I joined SIOP, I think maybe in 2021. I think my first Congress was um, after COVID, which is virtual Congress. And then uh, my first, that was online. And within the range of 2020, 2021, today I, I sit on the board of SIOP. Uh, it shows you how, how good, uh, uh, how much growth that you can have uh, being part of SIOP and then putting your art uh, into, into what you're doing. And then when I speak to people and people first say, are you a pediatric oncologist? I said, no, I am a patient advocate. And I have someone in Nigeria that told me of recently to you are a pediatric oncologist. Stop saying, because you actually roll in this. And that's, that's the uniqueness of SIOP, what SIOP can do for you. And coming back to uh, as, a, as, as a chair of Young SIOP, I think, um, like Regen said, our community is the fast rising and the largest community where we have over 1,200 people as a member of SIOP. And for us, this community is the future of SIOP. This community uh, um, is, is, is the tomorrow of what SIOP can be. And um, I just want to encourage every young person here to find your place in the Young SIOP. I joined SIOP and I found my place in the Young SIOP and that is how the joining is. So you can be in the broader SIOP and try and be in the network, try and be in the committee, but you need to find a place of your, of your people. There is this, this connection of your people and the connection of my people is the Young SIOP because I'm above, I'm below 40. Uh, uh, um, and I and not just not just joining 
young sao but identify a working group where you can explore your potential and i think that's that's just it for me and that's one thing sao would give to you when you have a potential show forth your potential and then you can explore the the i mean raju said she was so glad to be able to present our work, our abstracts. In the, and that is what Sayop could do for you. My first presentation abstract was on Sayop globally. And I've been able to present two abstracts on Sayop in Barcelona, in, uh, uh, in Canada last year. And it will interest you. I think I submitted two abstracts this year. I was so eager to work on two abstracts this year and even even have my team different part of my team in nigeria uh, submitting abstract to just be to be able to present their work on a global space and that is what psyop could give you so like i said i was trying to say identify yourself in a working group i found uh, um social media a uh, uh, working group as as a place where i can explore myself and then i was able to explore myself and when the opportunity comes Rajin said it, don't be shy to put yourself out. You never know. You never know. I mean, I think I submitted my 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 application on the final day of, of when it was closing. And I never know that, I mean, within 2021, and this is 2024, I'm going to be sitting on the board of SIOP. If anybody tells me when I was joining SIOP, I'll say, no, 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 no. And that is how robust SIOP can be. It gives you the place to explore your potential. It gives you the place to network with other other, other colleagues. It gives you the place to learn to learn from from people. I, I've been privileged also to be on the advocacy uh, committee of SIOP uh, in just this space. So, uh, uh, if you are a young person, please be on SIOP. Don't just be on SIOP. Come to. We have amazing opportunities at the Young Sire uh, uh, um, Network. You can join our working groups. You can you can join our programs. You can apply uh, um, for, for the awards. Uh, one of our, our most unique awards is the uh, Rising Star Award, uh, which which I, I, will, I would like to just talk about quickly before I wrap up. The Rising Star Award gives you an opportunity to uh, showcase your uniqueness, to, for you to be recognized in the work that you are doing in your country, in your region. And so uh, um, if, if you are doing an amazing work, you can apply for these Rising Star Awards. I mean, the application is currently ongoing. It's going to, I mean, just, just put in your work. I mean, I mean, if, if, if you have been picked, I mean, your work will be recognized globally. And, and, and that's, that's what, so uh, uh, as the year goes on, the Young Star will be revealing most of our projects. Uh, we're going to be having a training, uh, um, a non-Congress education uh, activity in the course in May. And uh, so you're going to be hearing more of that. And then we're going to be having a forum that brings all the young people together. Uh, I mean, very soon. So please just, just keep the buttons. Please go on Young South Connect now. Go on South Connect now. If you're here, just activate your Young South uh, uh, network activation so that you can get more information. And you can tell your colleagues too. Yeah, that are young. Coming to Sayo, there is a place for you. Thank you so much, Gorede. It's a pleasure to have you, uh, to have young Sayo in, within Sayo, our young members and very active members. And as you have said, everyone can find a place uh, in Sayo. And it is really, Sayo has helped a lot in our careers. Don't, doesn't it, Guillermo? Like we have met so many people, learned so much from each other. And uh, it made us motivate more to do more. When you hear what is being done in the world, you try to do better in your country, in your region, in your center. So it did give us a lot of uh, uh, motivation. And well, uh, do you have the poll, uh, Enelia, ready? So that we we have about 20 participants also, but we can have, we have two polls, two questions, two polls. We can do them and then we can continue with the slides later. And Elia? So here is the poll. How many SIAP Congresses have you attended? None, between one and three, more than three. Could you please answer and submit? 
and we'll have the results in a few moment, minutes. It was so nice to hear your first uh, experience in SIOP, Raul, Mirai, especially, and Corete and Maya. Really, this is very, we appreciate uh, your participation and we will be asking you after the polls on what are your uh, expectations for the future. Do we have the answer, uh, Nancy and Analia? We do, I'll just share the results now. Yes, so uh, 15 of the of today's participants, 15% have not uh, been in a SIOP Congress, 31 con uh, have been between one and three, 54% have been more than three, that should be Guillermo, me and Maya, I think more than three, right? Uh, or maybe some more because it's 54%. Good, so we want, many of you having more than three, even all Congresses. Yes, that's good. And now comes the second question. Yes, Anelia, we are ready for the second question. The second is question is, what activities SIAP could offer additionally to serve the members better? Uh, short answers, please write them. Maybe we cannot give the answer now, but we can evaluate them and then re go back to you. This is a good feedback for us all. Uh, what activities you want uh, that SIOP offers you. Please write what you want to offer, what what you want us to offer, please write them. And meanwhile, while this is answered, I had seen Ellen from our board uh, that he had joined. Is he also, is he online at the moment? And Ellie or Nancy, can you see him? I don't see him, unfortunately. No, I think we lost him. Uh, okay. Maybe you can send him a message if he's okay, sure. because uh, mm -hmm. it was nice to hear his experience also as a uh, experienced member, yeah. So you're getting the answers. I think you will, we will need time to evaluate. So the evaluation would be done later, right? For the activities that we could offer. Yes, absolutely. Feel free yeah, because, to, once you've yes. answered, just minimize okay. the poll screen okay. and we'll continue. Okay, okay. You can do that and then we can continue in fact. And so you have, although you have written uh, what activities SIP could offer additionally, Maya, could we ask you, what do you think? Out loud, we are a small group, so we can ask for your uh, feedback. Guillermo, is that okay? Yeah. Maya, uh, can you, you're muted. Can you hear us? Or maybe Rajul, you, uh, you can, we can go. Oh yeah, Maya is unmuted, yes. Uh, yes, yes, I'm sorry, I was a bit. So, um, I, I didn't also hear your question. I'm so sorry. Did you ask about the uh, what, what activities do you expect SIAP to offer more? To yes, so I, yes, yeah. I, um, I mean, while the SIAP Congress itself is an amazing networking opportunity, um, it might be nice if we could have more networking opportunities throughout the year, mainly um, hybrid and online. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure how that can be worked out, but this was just a thought I had. Yeah. Some educational yeah, meetings have been going on online and hybrid. I'm not sure, uh, especially let's say it for our young members that every week they are announced in the uh, SIAP weekly bulletin, like the Istanbul Oncology uh, Educational Activities uh, almost every month. And uh, like nutrition has had some uh, activities. And Guillermo, you wanted to uh, come, comment on that? Yes. No, I just, uh, that's something that we are discussing, in fact, um, in the SIO board as part of our strategy. We feel that there is uh, room for doing uh, stronger um, continental congresses, depending on the area of the world, because we understand that it's getting quite difficult to travel so far away. It's difficult to get visas, it's expensive to travel. So it's uh, something that we are thinking also, you know, this year, unfortunately, we, we cannot offer the, the hybrid experience for the Congress because the cost would be really prohibitive and we want it to be a, a, an inclusive experience. But uh, of course, we offered the recordings and also the issue that uh, Hawaii is in a difficult time zone for most of the world. So, but we are mindful of that, Maya. Thanks for bringing that up. And uh, we are discussing also to consider, do, 
do you think that, for example, an educational virtual congress uh, or virtual meeting, it will not be a congress, maybe a virtual meeting from SIOP uh, could be of interest? What do you think? Yes, I think I think it would be of interest. Um, and uh, I mean, just as you mentioned, uh, a lot of people might find it difficult to uh, travel to certain places because of the cost and the distance. So I think maybe midway between two congresses, we could have an online meeting as well. Uh, and I agree with uh, Dr. Rajin, the uh, educational meetings are really of very good standard. And especially now that they're all being put up on the PSYOP YouTube uh, channel, it, it is very helpful. So despite all time zones, uh, having them accessible is, is actually very good. Thank you. And just to remind of the PSYOP continental meetings that Guillermo has just said, in 2024, we have the PSYOP Europe in May, the PSYOP Africa, the Latin America, and the Asia continental meetings in June. Especially as Guillermo said, everyone cannot uh, travel some, to uh, the Congress site, to the General Congress site, but if it is in the region, they may have an opportunity. And also there may be some scholarship opportunities within the Continental Congresses, right, uh, Guillermo? Yeah. Yes, yes, of course. They, sh they should wa watch out for those as well. Uh, the 2024 annual meeting, as you know, is in Honolulu, Hawaii, in October 17 to 20. Uh, I hope many can attend. It will. I'm sure it will be a very uh, good, uh, the scientific committee is working very hard on it. Uh, but we do understand uh, there may be difficulties of traveling and funding, but we hope that many can uh, find some funding and come to this meeting uh, in Hawaii. The other uh, future SIOP annual meetings in 2025 is in Amsterdam, in 2026 is in San Antonio, and 2027, the bids were for uh, Asia, Oceania, the other part of the world, and, but we don't have the results yet. So when we have the results, they will be announced. So now we can go on to hear your voices. So uh, Maya Rajul was here uh, and Korede is here. Rajul, as Maya said, what are your, ex uh, Maya has set her expectations. What are your expectations for future uh, from SIOP? You as a young SIOP member, what to expect? What can we do more? Uh, thank you, Rajin. Uh, I'm actually very grateful for all the activities that the SIOP is doing uh, currently and uh, the especially the educational meetings that it is it is ongoing and which is quite uh, informative and knowledgeable. Uh, for future, uh, I would uh, like I uh, as a, I would like to learn a lot from uh, the Congress and and you know meet. Uh, all you leaders in person and uh, learn a lot from y'all and uh, attend the Shia congresses as well. Uh, the first uh, congress in 2022 I attended uh, because I got a scholarship uh, for the Global Health uh, Network. So if uh, more such scholarship options or maybe the registration, uh, if uh, it can be uh, reduced, uh, uh, so it will be easy for us uh, to fund ourselves for the annual congress. Other yeah. than that, I think I'm I'm really appreciated and I'm really grateful for what's happening right now. Thank you so much. Yeah, we as SIOP board also are trying to uh, striving very hard to find scholarship opportunities, not only for the congress but especially for the park program, right, Guillermo, which is very important research in low middle income countries, and believe us that we are trying hard. And we hope that many of you can come with some funding opportunity, whether from SIOP or maybe some from local, from your local hospitals or local regional uh, NGOs, because sometimes NGOs may help in that respect as well. And Corede, so let's, we, you had also, you and Louise had sent also a message to all young SIOP members if they had any questions or comments. Did you receive any that you, you would like to refer uh, here and also your uh, own uh, comments? And we have- a, No, no. Yeah. yeah. Okay, no, we've not, uh, we didn't receive um, any message yet, but yeah. just to 
uh, portrays and to just to put also to to all that has been said and then um what is being expected from Sao. I think um I, I would I would be on the other side like you just said okay that for everyone uh, like we said um let us know what like like this this last poll let us know what you think and uh, let us know what you expect yeah. uh um for, and that, that's one thing about about even about the young side of we 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 operate an open forum uh like this where we give people an opportunity to tell us what they want from side what they want from young side so it wouldn't just be we sitting down and say you know what we just this this out to you and and and, and so uh let us just know if you're a member of Young Sab, Raju, sorry, I think um, I've not, I've not seen you on any of our working groups member or have you, are you part of any part of Sab, Young Sab? So Raju, Raju will be doing? more active in your working groups from now on, Koreda, don't worry. And yeah, let me yeah, tell you please, that Anelia yeah. has written the Global Health Network provide annually about 20 scholarships for the Sab Congress to Global Health Network members. So Please uh, follow the follow the weekly bulletins and try to follow whether you are eligible for a scholarship. And also, Korede, uh, thank you so much. With your permission, that we have three uh, more uh, members with whom we would like to have their ideas as well. Vikramjit Kanwar is here with us. Olu Wakemi is here with us. Lori uh, from the nursing is here with us. Uh, let's give the first word to Lori. Uh, we have told that the nursing network is working really very hard and to put the standards and strategic planning for the nursing, and we are grateful for that. Uh, what are your expectations as a nursing network uh, of SIOP? Oh, gosh. Thank you, Regine. It's good to be here with you all. Sorry, I'm a little scattered. It's still early in the morning in the United States. Don't um, worry. It's an informal uh, meeting. We are just... Uh, I know. That's one thing I love about SIOP is I think, um, you know, my first Congress was in 2016, I think, the one in, um, in Dublin. And I think immediately there's a sense that you're among friends and there's a sense of community. And I've valued that very much. I think, you know, as we, you know, I want to be careful not to speak too much on behalf of the nursing leadership because yeah. Courtney is, is the is the chair of that. I think I value, you know, opportunities to really, I think, elevate the different disciplines that we have caring for our children with cancer. And um, yeah. I think we're going to see, you know, some groups really looking at our baseline nursing standards again. So, you know, where have we come in advocating for consistent nursing practice at the bedside, um, ensuring that hospitals are valuing not rotating nurses across units every every few months and having a good having nurses who are grounded in the knowledge and the skills that they need to take care of our patients and also within the interdisciplinary teams seeing nurses valued as members of that care team so you know something even just as simple as including nursing nurses in some of those um, bedside discussions related to the to the care of the patient. Thank you so much, Laurie. Really, uh, nurses and physicians work hand in hand in childhood cancer. You are very precious. And in SIOP also, as you know, like in the supportive care educational day meetings, we always had a very good uh, collaboration with the nursing network, supportive care network, global health network, young SIOP network. And in SIOP, we want that really good collaboration within all these networks. Thank you so much. And Ula uh, Wakami, would you like to introduce yourself? Where are you from? And what are your expectations from SIO? Welcome, first of all. You are muted. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. Good um, good day. My name is Ula Wakami Atolagbe. I'm from Nigeria. Good. Welcome. Okay. Yeah, thank you. As a new member, I am just like going through the um, PSYOP and 
looking through it and trying to learn one or two. So for now, I would say that my expectations are being met and I hope we can improve in all ways that we can. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we have an experienced member, Vikram Kanwar. Would you, we would like to take your, we'd like to hear from you as well. Sure, Regine. I mean, it's like, you know, the one thing I think, you know, everybody has probably already said it all by now. But the thing about PSYOP is it touches on so many different aspects of care. When you're taking care of children with cancer, you know, whether it's the nursing piece, the psychology, the chemotherapy, radiation surgery, you name it, the general care. And it's a community. So I think that's the key. All of us feel, you feel at home when you're with PSYOP. And I think I, I can see Laurie vigorously nodding her head. And, and if you shake your head, I'll be really upset. <laughs> <laughs> so and and it's not hierarchical. You 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 can just walk up and talk to anybody. Like you know, I mean, I I spoke to Guillermo when I was in Barcelona, and I didn't feel like I was speaking to the president of the president elect of the SIOP Association. You don't feel a distance between yourself and senior members. I mean, like you know, you 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 feel very much at home. You can get things done. That's the other important thing. Like, you know, it, it's you work with like-minded people. And I'm sorry, I could talk forever. So I, I won't do that. It's getting yeah. towards the end of the meeting. Other people need to speak as well. But you can get things done and get things done for the good of the kids. Thank you so, so much. Uh, thank you for expressing your uh, ideas and your uh, feel for SIOP. SIOP is really a big family, a big family of physicians, nurses, other healthcare personnel. Uh, patients, advocates, survivors that all feel that we have to cure more and care for all children with cancer as SIOP's mi uh, mission and vision is. And I think we are all uh, aiming to do that. Uh, we are all volunteers in SIOP and we do this with our enthusiasm, our dedication, and we hope that this will uh, last forever so that we can do more and more. So we are coming to the end. We have two more minutes and I would like, like to ask the, uh, our president, Guillermo Chantada, for his uh, words before closing. Yes. Thank you very much, Eugene. It's so nice to see very good friends and many new um, friends as well in this, in this meeting. It's, a, it's an honor for us to listen to you, to hear from what you say, to try to come up with uh, projects and programs that address your needs. And so please uh, reach out. Uh, we are going to have a, this series of meetings. Uh, we are starting, uh, we, we have started last year. We are going to do it every time. So please come to us. This is what we want and looking forward to serve you more and better. So thank you very much again for, for being with us today. Well, uh, so before closing, I would also like to thank uh, all of you for participating, for expressing your wishes, your, ex uh, your uh, emotions for SIOP, our president Guillermo Chantada for being with us, uh, our Nancy and uh, Anelia for being with us. And as uh, Dr. Shantada has said, please reach out to us whenever you ha have any questions, any suggestions. We are a big family and we are open to all suggestions for the benefit of PSYOP and for the benefit for children with cancer all, all over the world. So with this, if you can open your cameras, we can take a family photo. And Ellie, I'll take one. Maybe you can take one also. Yeah, okay. So smile. Yes, look. Ulwakami, if you can, you can open your video, but we have your name anyway. So we have today's family uh, photo also, and we thank you all a lot for being here, for thinking of SIOP, for taking the initiative for every uh, for childhood cancer. Thank you so much. Let's meet in another open forum. Thank you very thank much. You. Have a nice thank day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.